I love to sleep. It requires minimum effort, and you get to escape the stress and woes of reality. But sometimes I really dislike the need for it. Sometimes I just want to be up for 48 hours straight without having my soul leave my body in order to search for a more responsible vessel. We only have a limited time on this planet, and since I can't clone myself yet to maximize my activity output, I'd at least want to maximize the time I spend being conscious. Do you realize how many That's animes and video games I could finish much mm -hmm. quicker if I didn't have to sleep? Because honestly, they're making them at a much faster rate than I can finish them. Anime and video games, Dom? How about them animations? Okay, I didn't subscribe for bi-weekly videos. I demand you stop being a lazy ass and upload daily animations. Mm -hmm. I have rights, okay? Sometimes I wish we were like smartphones where we just need to plug ourselves in to recharge, but not have to power down to do so. Okay, people have told me that it's bad to use your phone while charging, while other sources say otherwise. Internet, can you confirm? Hit me with some science. Sleeping positions is another thing. I've always slept on my stomach for the majority of my life because that's just the most comfortable position for me and helps me KO the quickest. A couple of years ago, I started feeling some spinal pains, and when I went to go see a physician and told him how I slept, he was like, yeah, don't, don't do that. And now I have to be really aware of my spine and how I sleep so I don't end up being perpendicular someday. But sometimes I just don't give a damn and will sleep in my favorite position anyway, the victory pose. Because I like to sleep like a winner and remind myself how good we have it up here in Canada while our neighbor has to deal with this clown fiesta. And then you have dreams which most of the time you don't even have control over. Well, I mean, I've tried. We all have. I like to start my dreams by apologizing to Uncle Ben and then continuing to use my superhuman powers irresponsibly with little to no consequences. I've had so many apocalyptic dreams of World Armageddon where monsters and zombie hordes are a daily norm and I'm forced to kill or be killed. And then I'd wake up and it's like... <laughs> Aw, still boring. But on the flip side, I've also had surreal dreams that were so captivating that it forced myself to continue where I left off the previous night, as if it was some episodic series on Netflix. I used to sleepwalk as a kid and did some of the weirdest things. And I only know this because my family witnessed me in the act, so I can only imagine what kind of things happened when no one was around. There was one time I went to the bathroom door which was just past my sister's room. My older sister just happened to be awake and caught me just standing in the hallway. When she got up and asked what I was doing, I just started stroking the doorframe like a genie lamp. Continued doing this for a solid minute, and then turned around and went back to bed. Another time when we used to live in a single story house, I was in the middle of a nap and I needed to go to the bathroom. But instead of waking up and doing so, I slept walked to the bathroom. But because of the layout of my house, I overshot the distance and ended up peeing in the kitchen into a shelf where we kept the bread. My mother's scream was enough to bring me back into consciousness, but I was still in the middle of my session, so I panicked and made an even bigger mess. And then another time, which was pretty fucking creepy, I wandered into my sister's room. Again, my sister asked if I was okay, but I didn't answer and just walked up to their window, started gesturing to something that seemed to be standing outside on the street, and repeated, Come back, come back, over and over until walking away and going back to bed. What the fuck? Was... Was my house haunted? Snoring is a big issue for me, and proof of that was my most embarrassing moment, which many of you know about. I've become very self-conscious about it and tried my best not to disturb others if I ever slept over at their place or if I had to share a hotel room with someone. If there aren't any form of acoustic barriers between us, I'd sometimes wait and make sure everyone is asleep first before I went to sleep, or else a nasal concert would await them and continue to keep them awake for the duration of the night. People sometimes wonder if I'm dying because I tend to emulate that kind of sound through my snore, but I'm actually perfectly fine after I wake up. I should probably get it checked though, or maybe I got possessed by a spirit from my old house, and it hinders my life by messing up my breathing and transforming me into an anthropomorphic Vuvuzela. It's like being an annoying superhero. Animator by day, Vuvuzela by night. It's Domix, and he's here to interrupt your sleep, but also make you concerned for his health and well-being. After going through my architecture program in university, I truly learned the value of sleep and how much I'd be willing to go to jail for strangling someone for interrupting a 30 minute nap. School gave me few opportunities to sleep if I wanted to maintain my GPA. It came to a point where I'd have to strategize and calculate bursts of sufficient sleep that would adequately get me through the day. Okay, it's now 2 a.m. and my class is at 8 a.m. It takes me two hours to commute to school and no more than one hour to eat breakfast, shower, and get dressed, meaning I should wake up at 5 a.m. That gives me three hours of sleep, just enough.
enough cycles before I go into deep sleep. I should be good. Wait. What's that sound? <sighs> Yo. Take notes for me. I think my biggest issue with sleep is thinking I've never done enough in the day before doing so. Some days pass by so quickly that I can't even recall the events that occurred that day. Oh crap, it's 1am already and I've only animated one scene. How did I spend five hours reading creepypasta? Most of the time, I'm not even aware of how far we are into the week. See, my philosophy is that tomorrow only comes after I wake up. And postponing sleep is the only way I can extend the today. Perhaps because I'm not ready for the tomorrow. Or perhaps days are filled with so much bliss that going to bed means submission, and avoiding sleep is my futile attempt at overindulging in something that need not to be kept in the present and can only survive as a past experience. And then I remember that final fantasy.